So the Sony ZV-E10 is a three-year-old camera body and the Sony a7 III is almost a six-year-old camera body. So there's a three-year age gap between the two. Though one is aimed at vloggers and the other is aimed at professionals. Can this small, lightweight, $1,000 camera stack up against this $2,500 semi-pro camera? Because it's newer, does it surpass it? And most importantly, is it good enough that you could save yourself the $1,500 and go with the ZV-E10 instead? My wife just bought this camera for her YouTube channel and social medias. I'll have her links in the description below. Be sure to go check her out. And she was kind enough to let me use it for this comparison video. So first things first, let's cover the similarities between these two different cameras. The first similarity is that they both have 24 megapixel sensors, though they are different and I will address that in the differences portion of this video. 24 megapixels will give you very high resolution images on both cameras that will allow you to crop in without having to worry about losing image quality and even being able to blow them up fairly large when printing. You can even use these cameras as webcams if you choose to make your streams and meetings much higher quality than just a standard webcam. Both cameras can shoot in RAW and have fairly high burst rates, though not quite as high as some other cameras, boasting 11 frames per second on the ZV-E10 and the a7 III in close second with 10 frames per second. I figured the difference was so minimal that it counted as a similarity, but if you really want to be a stickler, the ZV-E10 wins here, even if it is by a marginal difference. They both have rear adjustable LCD screens that you can view your photos and videos on, and they're both almost the same resolution. With the a7 III coming out slightly ahead with 922,000 dots versus 920,000 dots on the ZV-E10. So it's like a negligible difference and you probably won't even notice it at all. Both rear LCD screens are touch screens, but the functionality of that is limited. There is a slight difference with the LCD screens, but I will mention that later in the video. Both cameras have face and eye tracking autofocus for both human and animals and it's very snappy and reliable but obviously will be faster with a higher end lens. Speaking of lenses, both cameras have Sony's E-mount which will give you a huge selection of lenses to choose from for both cameras. From Sony themselves but also from third-party lens makers like Sigma, Tamron, Samyang and so on. Not only does this give you many options for focal lengths and apertures, but also price point. That was actually one of the reasons I switched to Sony was for the lens selection and budget friendly er options. Being able to find an f1.4 prime or f2.8 zoom lens for literally almost half the cost sometimes of the brand name pro line is a huge pro pro. <laughs> for Sony, especially for photographers who may not be at that point in their career yet where they can afford a $3,000 G Master version, but still want something similar to take their photos to that next level. As far as wireless connectivity and options, both cameras have NFC, Bluetooth, and wireless built right in. So you can share photos from your camera without any cords needed, which is perfect for when you snap a quick pic for the socials and just want to throw a quick edit on it and post it without having to get your laptop out, pop in your SD card, transfer everything over, then go into Lightroom, put an edit on it, export it, put it on your phone, and then finally post it. Makes the time between taking the photo and and posting it much shorter. You can also use your phone as a remote, which is a super handy feature to have when you just want to take some photos or videos of yourself. As for video capabilities, these cameras share a lot of similarities. Both cameras can shoot 8-bit 4K video at 30 frames per second, as well as 1080p at 120 frames per second. Both cameras can shoot in S-Log 2 and 3. Because both cameras only shoot 8-bit footage, you're best off shooting in S-Log2. And even though the ZV-E10 can only shoot 8-bit footage, the fact that you can shoot in a log profile on a $1,000 camera is quite amazing actually, and gives budget creators more creative flexibility and choice. The barrier to entry on log has gotten drastically smaller, and that's a good thing. Both cameras have a hot shoot for mounting a flash, a mic, or other devices. Though on the ZV-E10, mounting a flash can feel a little unbalanced because the camera body is so light and the flash is heavier. Whereas on the a7 III, the body weighs more and feels a little more balanced with the flash attached. Real quick, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining. As a small channel, your likes, comments, and subscribes really mean a lot to me and go a long way to helping my content and my channel reach more people. So please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe, and be sure to hit that little bell so you're notified of all future content. So now, I think it's time we go over the differences between these two cameras. What do you think, now, yeah? Now's probably a good time? in the video to, to talk about the differences. I've talked about the similarities long enough. I'm gonna stop rambling on, we're gonna go ahead. So first, let me address the differences I mentioned when I was talking about the similarities earlier in the video. So first off, 
The biggest difference between these two cameras is the sensors. While both being 24 megapixels, there is a big difference. While the a7 III has a full frame sensor, the ZV-E10 actually has a APS-C or cropped sensor. This does impact the overall image quality. Because the a7 III sensor is much bigger than the ZV-E10 sensor, but has the same megapixel count, the megapixels on the a7 III sensor will actually be larger and therefore capture more light detail, resulting in more dynamic range in your photos and videos and better low light performance. You'll be able to capture and recover more details in the shadows with less noise. Also, if you put the same focal length lens on both the a7 III and the ZV-E10, you'll actually be able to capture more of the scene with the a7 III. Because the ZV-E10 has a cropped sensor, it crops in your image by 1.6 times meaning a 50 millimeter lens will be equivalent to an 80 millimeter lens on the ZV-E10 because 50 millimeters times 1.6 is 80 millimeters. This can be both a pro and a con because you'll be able to have more reach on a shorter focal length than a full frame can, but can also be a con when you wanna shoot wide in a tighter space because you'll need an even wider angle lens than you will on a full frame. As for the rear LCD screen, this is where the ZV-E10 actually has a leg up in my opinion. The ZV-E10 screen actually is fully articulating, whereas the a7 III's is only a tilt adjustable screen. This is great for when you want to take photos of yourself or vlog or, you know, shoot a YouTube video and want to be able to check your framing, which is much tougher on the a7 III. I had to get an external monitor so that I could check my framing in my YouTube videos, whereas on the ZV-E10 I'd just be able to flip her around. Some of the biggest differences of these cameras make glaringly obvious what their intended uses are. These next few differences highlight the fact that the ZV-E10 is a video focus camera and the a7 III is a hybrid camera. Don't get me wrong, both cameras can take photos and videos, but the lack of a viewfinder on the ZV-E10 makes it less suitable for shooters who want to focus on photography and videography, as a viewfinder is crucial to photography in my opinion. I know some photographers probably only ever use the rear LCD screen to compose their shots, but me personally, I like to use the viewfinder. It really helps me hone in my compositions and removes external distractions when lining up the shot. In addition to this, there are more customizable buttons and dials on the a7 III that make it more suitable to professional photography, allowing you to quickly adjust shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and shooting modes, white balance, metering, and so on. You can do this on the ZV-E10 as well, but have to go digging through the menu system in most cases first, in comparison to just pressing a button or rotating a dial. One other thing that kind of points to the hybrid nature of the a7 III is the max shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second in comparison to the ZV-E10's 1 4,000th of a second. Don't get me wrong, 1 4,000th of a second is plenty fast and able to freeze most action, but the fact that the a7 III can do 1 8,000th of a second, literally twice as fast, just gives it that photographic edge. Not to mention the a7 III's battery is much larger than the ZV-10's, giving you more shots and longer video sessions on one charge before having to swap the batteries. This is a huge plus for the a7 III as you won't have to swap the batteries as often as you will on the ZV-E10. But when it comes to video, the ZV-E10 kind of comes ahead with this. The ZV-E10 has an unlimited record time, whereas the a7 III has a 30 minute record limit. Another big thumbs down for me because I'll be talking to the camera, you know, in the zone and uh, not know if my camera actually stopped recording or not. And I'm just in a room talking to myself for no reason. This is a pretty huge deal because it allows you to record uninterrupted for as long as your battery will last or your SD card will allow. Perfect for something like video podcasts where you can just hit record and let your guests talk uninterrupted without having to go back and hit record again after 30 minutes. This is a big con for the a7 III in my opinion. Though both cameras shoot 4K, the a7 III actually super samples 6K footage down to 4K, leading to an overall sharper image. The last big difference I'll mention before going to some littler, not so significant differences, is that the a7 III is weather sealed, whereas the ZV-E10 is not. This gives you that little extra peace of mind, knowing that when you're out shooting, if the weather shifts suddenly before you have a chance to cover your camera, you have that extra layer of protection on the a7 III that you just don't on the ZV-E10. Some less notable differences, but some that might still be important to you is that the a7 III has two SD card slots, one being UHS-1 and the other being UHS-2. The ZV-E10 only has one card slot and it is UHS-1 only. Additionally, both cameras have a type of stabilization. The a7 III has sensor shift stabilization, which is a mechanical 
mechanical stabilization, which moves the sensor with the movement of the camera to reduce shake and movement in the final image or video, leading to sharper images and more stabilized video, within reason of course. The ZV-E10 has a type of stabilization called gyroscopic stabilization, which records the movement data of the camera and allows you to stabilize the image in post with a crop factor. Though I don't believe this has any effect or impact on photography, you would just have to use a lens that has OSS. The a7 III has more autofocus points, which means the autofocus will cover more of the scene. The a7 III has 693 autofocus points and the ZV-E10 only has 425. Now, there are other differences between these two cameras, but they're pretty minor, unless I'm forgetting something big, but I don't think I am. So, my final thoughts on the a7 III versus the ZV-E10. The ZV-E10 is a great budget option for people who are newer to videography, and that's gonna be their main focus with this camera. Does it stack up to the a7 III? Well, I think it comes pretty close, which is very impressive for a $1,000 camera. But I do think the a7 III comes out ahead with better dynamic range, sharpness, and low light performance. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think if you're new to videography and that's what your main focus is gonna be, the ZV-E10 is a great option for you that allows you to dip your toes in and get accustomed to some higher end features like shooting in log while keeping things fairly affordable. I think it would be worth saving the $1,500 by going with the ZV-E10 and using that extra money towards higher quality glass in this situation. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you want even more information on the a7 III, check out my full review of it here and whether it's even worth getting in 2024.